liberating people of their time and allowing them to do what really excites their soul and to live a life of purpose. Hi, welcome to the next episode of Freedom Culture Mastermind. Right now with me is Vishal. Welcome to the show, Vishal. Thank you for having me. Vish, it's a pleasure to have you. Man, I'm so stoked that we get to sit down. And I want to ask you a first question, just to change it up a little bit. What gets you really, really triggered? Triggered? Yeah. I guess when people don't really know me and they give me suggestions. You know, because I know myself <laughs> yeah. and I, I really know what I'm capable of. And sometimes you meet new people and then just by hearing a little fragrance of your story, they want to give you suggestions. Boom. Yep. I love that. Yep. That's honesty. That's radical honesty. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yep. The depth of who you are, I have no, I have no idea. Like I've, I've met you last year, I've met you this year, and we've, mm -hmm. we've had lots of conversations, but there's so much to discover. And opposing that onto somebody after some seconds, ooh, man, thanks for going in right away. Yep. So you're back in the jungle at Freedom Culture Mastermind. You must have a clear idea of what freedom culture really means to you. Sh share with us, like what's that feeling inside of you that, that has you crave and desire to be part of building freedom culture on this planet? I guess it's, I, I grew up as a boy scout, you know? I was a boy scout when I grew up. And uh, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to join the military because I wanted to be a good guy. That's what oh, a wow. good guy was when I was growing up. You know, you see the movies and you're like, hey, these guys totally. are out here to get his freedom. And, and you know, now that I've had some time mm -hmm. to mature, I realize to understand freedom, what's the opposite of freedom? And so I realized there are lots of soldiers left behind right now. And there are all these people working in offices and they're stuck. They have wow. no other option. They're there nine to six plus overtime, which is kind of mandatory these days because I've been there myself. And when you're there, you're like, when are things going to change? Like, where's the support system, you know? And so freedom culture for me is liberating people of their time and allowing them to do what really excites their soul and to live a life of purpose. What accelerates our soul and lets us live a life of purpose. Yeah. I love that. I think support is one of the, the, the major topics for me as well when I'm in community. I love supporting others. I love to see, oh wow, maybe I could just be of service or when I fuck up or when something doesn't go as I thought it would, would go. It's great to know that there's brothers and sisters who are like, Julian, we have your back, don't worry. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about these people and so, Beautiful. So this, this gets me to like drop like su such a level deeper into this conversation because how come that we have a society, right? Like we're in our society. W what is the next step forward? When, when we see projects like NASA are clearly like a international collaboration, bringing together all these diverse skills and abilities. And yet, at the same time, so many warriors and soldiers go into this patriotic act of operating for their countries or their, in our age, more so the companies and, and kind of chasing the successful life of being an entrepreneur or CEO. Like, what, what do you see as the next step forward when we actually are living a humanity that supports each other? Could you reiterate that question a little bit? Sure. So I happen to know that you're building something called Unite.Earth. Mm -hmm. And... I feel like when we talk about unification, it's such a big buzzword and such a big feeling word that for a lot of people, it's like, it's not even clear what it means, right? And yet I feel you named it, being supported in a tribe or in a community, that leads to collaboration. Yep. And then we know that cohorts like NASA are cohorts of collaboration. That's a very different culture than in many other places of creation, right? Like Exactly. And especially the online community, and that inspired me a lot. We have all of this open source code. And so is that a socialist lifestyle or, or what is it? You know, it's, some, it's a new hybrid. It's something entirely new. And there are a lot of people coming together right now and they just need the platforms. Like if Wikipedia didn't exist, we wouldn't have all of these editors turning turning up and for for nothing you know they don't get paid and they're out here to do justice for their people beautiful so 
tell, tell us more about this way of thinking, being, and working. Is it, what, what is your vision or your, your, your dream with Unite.Earth that, that keeps you so passionate and so lit on, on acting on it? Well, I guess it all started with listening. I spent six years listening to people and finding out what everybody's needs are. And it turns out we need an ecosystemic change right now. So every little part of the ecosystem, they all need to intertwine and kind of grow together in a common direction. An ecosystemic change. I love that wording. Keep going. Yeah. And then so with Unite.Earth, I realized that I'm, I'm a full-time planetarian, humanitarian. I really want to do good, you know, and I realized we don't have all of the time in the world. I want to do it for us, the elders, the children, the animals, and everything. The water, you name it. And yes, please. <laughs> yeah. And so, Unite.Earth, it came about originally because, you know, I'm a Boy Scout, and one of the vows we have to take, well, I used to be a Boy Scout, now I'm like the next evolution of whatever that is. Um, there's no name. And... Uh, I realized one of the vows you take is I'm always going to put others before myself. And so I was like that for many years, especially after taking ancestral medicine, because, you know, um, the plants really helped me a lot. Because I, I think the plants are smarter than we are. And what are we if not just uh, consumers of nutrients and plants all of the time anyway? And so I changed from putting others before myself to realizing I am a full-time planetarian do-gooder how about I help myself? What, what am I missing? And how do I accelerate all the good that I'm trying to do? And the, the philosophy behind this it goes a little something like this. If you were to design your dream chair, maybe it's not a chair, that's, that's a trick question. Your dream way of being seated and being comfortable. Whatever you design that makes you as comfortable as you can be, there's a huge chance if I sat on that thing I might be extremely comfortable too. So, you know, that's the kind of philosophy behind Unite.Earth. How do I create a platform that can help me be a better planetarian? And, and I guess that's how it started. I really enjoy this wording, better planetarian, coming from a place of listening. That's very similar to the quest I'm on myself, which is this idea of what is our shared vision for this earth. Right? Do we even have one? Or are we just fighting symptoms and trying to achieve a to-do list like the SDGs, which I think that's a great first step. And, and, and then what? Or what are we even doing all this for? So becoming a better planetarian, a better earthling in that sense, is there a better place to practice than a permaculture farm? I guess not. Off the grid? Well, yes and no. For people who are ready and can embrace this kind of a lifestyle and are liberated enough to change their ways, yes, this is like one of the ultimate ways of being. So this would be at the end of the line towards the, the winning kind of area. Um, but for most people who are stuck in cities, they have to play a slightly different game. And their, their method of being um, a good human being would be making better choices and it's hard for everybody to make their own choice and that's why efficiency comes in hand like if i've gone out there and researched every single brand i'm in cities often and every now and then i need new things i need a new pair of trousers and i ask people in cities hey where can i go and these are good people i ask them where can i go to get a the, the most sustainable trousers that i can find right now and most people stumble on that question. Mm -hmm. And then that leads me to do a lot of research, hours and hours and hours of research. I'm really good at research, by the way. It's something <laughs> I studied. And, and so now I've already done the research. So why should every other human being also have to do the research? Totally. We can, you know, aid them. And all of a sudden, everybody takes, you know, light speed to get there. Sharing the resources that we have access to or that we have created by do, doing things like research or doing, doing things like experimenting. Yes. So can you share a little bit more about how that this is, this is available and, and tactile on Unite.Earth? Well, I guess Unite.Earth, um, it's a very big platform. And right now I, I'm very excited about the future phases, but to be grounded, I'm rounding it down to what I call an MVE, minimum viable excitement, because... <laughs> 
I want people to be excited <laughs> about it and really engage. Excitement. Yeah. And so I guess it I starts off with gathering. You know, sometimes I get lonely. You know, I'm at home. I want to spend time with people that also care about the planet. I don't want to get distracted and, and just spend time with people that want to talk about what happened on television or, or what some sort of celebrity is up to. I, I want to engage with like minded people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're scattered around your city and you don't even know them all, you know? And so the whole purpose of Unite.Earth is to bring these people together on a unified platform where every single person is real and it, it is very much an in-person platform. So we want people to do things in real life. And the MVP, the MVE, is basically you can co-eat, co-work or co-play together. And that's just the beginning just to get through the door and allow people to like there, there's a saying um, and it's been theorized to be true that you are a culmination of the five people you spend most of your time with mm -hmm. and let's just say you change your diet a lot of people are tending towards veganism now you know and it's very difficult if you're the only vegan in a bunch of you know with all of your friends because now they're going to go to where they want to go and you don't always get to eat the, the highest quality of food that you're, you're trying to seek for yourself. And it's hard to maintain good new habits for yourself. And so you can co-eat with people with your dietary preferences. And earlier you mentioned the Sustainable Development Goals. They're, you know, some people refer to them as SDGs. But I realize most people don't know what they are yet. They have not gone mainstream. And when you tell, when you say the word SDG in, to somebody who, who's not familiar with it, it sounds like STD, you know, it sounds like kind of <laughs> oh like God, a dirty yeah. word. And so they've I, definitely I, not gone entirely mainstream at this yeah, point. Yeah, I agree. And so I, I call them the global goals now. The global and goals. And so every user picks a global goal because everybody has to be passionate about the, the planet in mm -hmm. some way or form. And if not the planet, one of the animals, is it the water? Is it the, the air quality? And so, yeah. It's something that we can all unite over. Something we can all unite over. Can you give us a little bit more of what that means personally for Vish? Like, what do you envision a world that, that, is, that feels united? Like, what is it going to feel like to you? Well, I guess it's different for me because I'm here and I, I'm towards um, a certain part of my quest and my dream is to live in a regenerative village mm. and i think people in the future are really going to tend to that why because regenerative villages have proven to um enhance longevity you know clear thinking people are very very healthy there, there's a guy i know um nearly 70 and he runs up and down the hills and he's healthier than i am because he lives on a regenerative village um but you know it, it, there are so many aspects to why I want to live that way. The, the carbon efficiency, you, you don't have a carbon footprint behind all of your things. Totally. We all want to eat the healthiest foods possible. And regenerative co-living. Yeah, but we need to take it up a notch too. I want to be around the animals. Mm -hmm. How often do we see Nature animals? Nature sanctuary. Yeah, yeah exactly. And preserve what's left of this beautiful planet. Because the truth is, while, while we're here and we're in cities, um, things are being torn down where we can't see them. And so one of my, one of the key elements on my agenda is to protect places of nature that have never been touched and to, you know, put our, put our flag down and be like, that's going to stay that way so that the future generations can see what reality really looks like. Because we live on an organic planet. I love that you bring bring in the animals in a sense like we're we're one with everything. So obviously we're one with our natural neighbors, like the the, the animals, the plants. If, if anyone follows shamanic traditions or ancestral wisdom, I think singing of plants is something that's been passed on in the mythology of humanity. And and now we even know we can we can literally put diodes onto our plants and have the the waves and frequencies be translated into sound. How does that look for you as an integration with kind of, let's just call it the matrix for the sake of no better word. Like what, what, is ha what happens to Vish when he goes to New York City or when he goes to LA? I get distracted a little bit because I'm a, a solution provider and whenever I see things that aren't efficient, that aren't really serving the people, um, it, it just gets my brain thinking a lot 
thinking mm-hmm. how can things be better for these people and that's just how my mind works so I, I do get distracted a lot in cities but because you know before the unite.earth platform came along which is in a way a distraction from my ultimate goal of living in a regenerative village I realized, you know, there are lots of inefficiencies. There, yeah. there is no real community. Because that's the reality, right? The reality is maybe we have these dreams and these visions already of receiving this regenerative lifestyle or living in permaculture farms or growing hydroponics in the city and making the communities of cities more vivacious, kind of like nature is all the time. You can even hear the birds in the background, I believe. You know, and yet there is kind of like a gap of connecting this apparent clarity of, of how one we are to our daily life and connecting it through our cell phones in a, in a way that doesn't get us distracted but actually helps us achieve this co-working, co-playing and co-eating. So I, maybe you're just creating a collaborative or, or like um, complementary component to your ultimate dream there. I, it's very curious to hear that all this comes from listening. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that journey of listening felt like? You, six years, you were, when you say just listening, were you silent entirely? No, I mean, I, I go to environmental conferences like the IUCN, International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Hmm. And, and it's really good to listen to what all of these experts are saying and the people on the ground. I meet with so many farmers and I find out what their concerns are and what they really need. And it turns out all of the people in this new paradigm um, have a lot of needs that aren't really met yet. And using either technology or the, you know, just plugging two people together can solve those um, and provide solutions for their, their problems. Really cool. Let me change it up a little bit and ask you a few rapid fire questions. So either give me like a yes or no answer or a, this one or, or, or neither, right? Okay. Cool. What do you prefer, jungle or desert? Jungle, for sure. Water or kombucha? Kombucha. Ah, wait a minute. I'm changing my ways now. I'm <laughs> not a fan of water. Not a fan of water? No. Kombucha it why. is for you. Yeah, but kombucha is cold, and I'm trying to stay away from all these cold things now as well. So maybe kombucha, water, or tea? Tea. Cool. There, there you go. Alcohol or cannabis? Cannabis, any day. Did 9-11 happen, fake or real? I don't know. Mm. Or was it orchestrated? I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely happened, but I mm. don't know anything about that. What does it feel like for you to be tribal with people? Tribal? Mm-hmm. I guess... I don't know how to answer that. No problem. Yeah, tribal would be collective living. Collective living? Yeah, because a tribe is a community, a real real community. Right, so collective living is more like an idea in the mind that I think I, I, I see as well. A, a tribe means collectively being together. Serving each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a way being where everybody has everything they need and maybe more. Wow. Living the principles of abundance. Yeah. What is happiness to you? Happiness is, I guess, the opposite of happiness is, or unloving is, I guess whenever I'm hungry, I'm not as loving as I could be. And so <laughs> happiness yeah, for me the is feeling. At the kind of, after I've eaten. Or even while I'm eating, you know, I, I love it. I, I love to be content. Nourishment. And, yeah, I, I don't like to be hungry. Happiness is the feeling of having eaten. Satisfaction. I, I, Satisfaction. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I like that. And also, um, yeah, being liberated of time makes me happy. And knowing that I don't have any chores to do. I, I like to blast all of my work and, you know, get to that place where I'm like, this is my time now. I can do whatever I want. And music makes me very happy. Nice. Yep. Let's jump on that timeline a little bit. And let me ask you another personal question. What is one of your first memories of, of knowing yourself? Because you mentioned earlier, like, you, you know yourself. You, you don't need others to give you suggestions unsolicited. What's one of your first memories of that notion? That's a complicated one. Because I guess I've always, in a kind of way, known myself. 
but I was always seeking a lot of answers. And so I guess I didn't really learn to know myself until I guess towards the end of 2012, very beginning of 2013, where I'd entered a whole new landscape. I'd gone to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and that's where I got to experience a new place. It's the first time I'd gotten off on holiday on my own, you know, not something I'd ever done. And it's not until I got there that I realized I can be my current new self right now. I don't have to bring the baggage of what I've been in my past, you know. None of those people are there to reflect that personality back to me. And now I can just be me or the person I am right now. And so I guess that allowed me to reinvent myself as who I really am. So I mm -hmm. guess that's, that's when I really got to know myself. Changing up the echo chamber in, in which you're being resonated as a certain personal individual. Yes. Powerful. Vish, is there anything else you feel like you'd like to share, like a piece of wisdom, insight, or a call to action? I guess I can't think of anything off the top of my head. No I, I wish I did have something to share. No worries. I well. guess, I, I, in a way, I want to say travel, but you know, when, when traveling, Go to ecological places and see if you can give back rather than just take. And the more you see, the more options you will have available to yourself because all we know is what we know. And if you don't know an option exists, you won't be able to choose it. Powerful. Yep. I love you shared that. Thank you. Vish, thank you so much for joining me for a short interview. Thank you. Go and enjoy the jungle. It's vivacious out there. It's alive. Breathe it in, take it in. and. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, brother.